So Portainer is one of the most popular tools for managing Kubernetes clusters, and it just got a new look for its UI. It allows you to do everything from running kubectl commands, viewing logs, managing nodes, and installing applications into your cluster. It's perfect if you're new and just learning Kubernetes, but it also has a lot of advanced features for the adept user as well. With a single installation command, you can get started with Portainer, and in this video, I'll show you how you can start using it to manage all your Kubernetes clusters. I'll be using the business edition of Portainer, which you can get started with for free as well for the first three nodes in your cluster. This is great for home lab environments or if you're doing a proof of concept for your business. Let's hop into Portainer. All right, so this is what the main Portainer UI looks like. And from here, you can see that I'm actually managing multiple Kubernetes environments. So I'm underneath environments and you can see I have a local environment, a dev cluster and a production cluster. So this local environment is my home lab that I am running here. And this is where I installed Portainer initially. So it was super easy to set up. All I had to do was a Helm install Portainer with a couple parameters, and that got Portainer up and running for me. Once I had the main Portainer instance set up, I wanted to connect my other clusters, and getting those set up was even easier. All I had to do was copy and paste a command that Portainer gave me to set up the agent in these clusters, and then they reached out to my main Portainer instance and registered. Now there are a couple different agent types that you can set up and the one that you choose will sort of be determined by your network setup. And if you want the Portainer server making the main connection, or if you want your edge agent to actually start the connection and connect up to your Portainer server, I have lots of links in the description below that will explain the difference. All right, so let's check out some of the other features of Portainer. I'm just gonna go into this cluster here and hit live connect. And you can see it sort of gives me a bird's eye view of exactly what's in this cluster. So you can see we have a bunch of namespaces, applications, services, and config maps. And if I were to click on any of these, I would be able to view these resources. But before I do that, I wanna show you my favorite feature, which is kubectl shell. So this just gives you a command line instance where you can run your kubectl commands. So those of you that love kubectl and you don't want to give up your command line experience, Portainer gives that to you. And the benefit here is you don't actually need your kubeconfig file on your laptop, your desktop, or whatever workstations you're working from. You can just connect to your Portainer instance and then you can live connect to the cluster and use kubectl from there. So if you go kubectl get namespaces, you can see that you can run your kubectl commands. Now let's say you're not familiar with kubectl shell and you just want to use the Portainer UI. That's perfectly fine. You can go here and this is where I like to start is just go under clusters and then details. And this will give you all the details of the nodes in your cluster. So this is my home lab. It's just two nodes. These are virtual machines and they are running the Talus OS. And you can see I have a control plane node and a worker node, and it gives me things like the status, how much CPU and memory, and the version, as well as the IP address. So all the basic information that you would need on your nodes. You can also click in and it'll give you more details on things like the labels and the current status. You can see taints here, and then you can see all the different pods that are running on this node. This is my control plane node, so it's just running the control plane stuff. But if I were to go back, and then go into my worker node, you can see most of my applications are running on this node. Now let's say you want to have a look at some of your applications. Well, you can click here or you can go over here and just go into applications. And you can see that it has all your different applications that are installed on your Kubernetes cluster organized for you here. Now it will put the applications together where it makes sense. So you can see this is my Argo CD application and it's actually made up of multiple different deployments. So Argo CD is a GitOps controller, but it actually has things like Redis, it has a repo server, it has the Argo CD server itself, it has a notification controller. So these are all different deployments running different pods and Portainer is smart enough to group these together logically. Now, if you want to go into any of these different applications, you can. I'll just go into Argo CD server here. 
All right, so this gives you all the details of the application. We can see it that this is a deployment. One of one pods are replicated. All the different annotations on it, as well as the note saying that this is our GetOps server. If I go to placement, I can see which nodes this is allowed to go on. Uh, it can't go on this one because this is my control plane node and it doesn't have tolerations for it. So this is a good way to help you visualize why your applications can't go on certain nodes. If I click events, I can get all the events of the application. You can see there's no events because nothing in this application happened recently. But if we were to restart the application, the event would come up here. And if I wanted to see the YAML, I have the YAML available to me right here and I could edit it, apply the changes. So it makes it pretty simple to do that. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you can see that we can do a rolling restart or a redeploy of the application. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, restart it here. And that's how easy it is to roll some pods. If we scroll down more, you can see you can get some information about auto scaling. So if your application used an HBA or a VPA, that information would show up here. I can see all the different environment variables. So this could be pretty key information and it's all available right here. And you can see that it actually comes in from this config map. Scroll to the bottom here and you can see the containers that are running. So it gives you all the information about the container, their status. This one's running. I can see the node it's running on. And I even have access to the logs of the container. So if I click here, I can see the logs of the application. So very good for troubleshooting. My other option here was to console into it. So basically, this is just running a bash shell within the application. And you're going to need to do this when you're troubleshooting in dev or production, you're going to want to get a shell session into the application so you can see exactly what's going on there. And this is a feature that I love to use. Now let's actually see how we can start creating resources using Portainer. So I'm actually going to create a namespace. So let's go to namespaces and you can add with a form or you can create from code. Let's do this one with a form. So I'm going to add with a form. And I'm going to create a namespace called dev. And you can add an annotation here, or let's add some resource quotas. So I'll say this namespace is allowed one gig of memory and unlimited CPUs. And it has an integration here with my controller for storage. So I can actually do a storage quota. So I'll say you get 100 gigs in the dev namespace. So I'll go ahead and hit create namespace and it's there and it's created. And if I click into it, I can go ahead and change any of these settings. I can even grab the YAML and throw this up in my GitHub repository if I wanted to keep this as code, which you'll probably want to do. I'm just going to go back to namespaces and here you can see all my different namespaces. Uh, one thing you might want to do is go into a namespace and see all the events on the namespaces and just see if anything strange is going on in that namespace. Again, just another really good thing for troubleshooting. Now, another thing that Portainer is really good at when you don't want to use QCuddle to do it is having a look at your config maps and secrets. So if I go here, you can see I have config maps and secrets. So if you wanted to modify any of your secrets, you could. I'm going to go in here and you can see I could easily change my secret and update the secret here. So very simple secret management. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for config maps. And if you want to change any of the configurations in a config map, just click the config map and you can see that we have all the different values. So for the Argo CD config map, you can actually create new users using the config map. So I'll just go create new entry and it actually goes to the bottom here. And the value should be a login for this config map secret. There we go. Update config map, update, and there you go. 
a very simple way to update your config maps. All right, so the last thing I want to show here that I actually use Portainer to do quite often is I use it to manage my Helm installations. And this is how I install most of my applications into my Kubernetes cluster. So if you go under Applications, you can go Create from Code, and you actually have quite a few different options here on how you can get your applications into your cluster. You can pull from a GitHub repository, or you can use Helm, which is a way that a lot of people use to install their applications or third-party applications into a cluster. So let's go ahead and go Helm Chart. And for the namespace, I'm going to choose Dev. And I'm going to actually install Nginx. So I'll just call it Nginx. And then I'm going to choose a repository. You can add any Helm repository that you want. I've already added these ones. So this is the Bitnami repository. And I'll just search for Nginx and click it here. And now I'm presented with a uh, blank values files. So if you're not familiar with Helm, I have lots of videos on Helm that sort of explains what the values file is, but basically it's your configuration. And here you can see that it actually gives you the defaults here. So if you wanted to change something that wasn't a default, you would just take this, copy it, paste it in and change the value. I'm fine with just accepting the defaults. So I'll hit install. And this is doing basically a Helm install into your Kubernetes cluster from the Portainer UI. So this is a very simple way to manage your Helm installations without having to get into the command line, remember all the commands. It's just sort of like a very easy way to do it. And this is the Helm installation details from the Portainer UI. So if you're familiar with Helm, all this information is going to be very familiar to you. And this is information that you usually want to get using the Helm CLI, but remembering those commands can be kind of cumbersome. It's a little bit difficult to have them all lined up in your head. So I find just using a UI like this a lot more intuitive, and it gives me all the information that I need about the Helm installation. So I have all my different revisions here on the right. I have all my different resources that got created from the Helm installation. I have things like events, like what time the container started. I have my values files. This is empty because we just accepted the defaults, but if I had user-defined values, they would all show up here and it'd be very easy to get them. And then I have the manifest to actually get what actually the manifest looks like in my Kubernetes cluster. So I'm really enjoying the Helm view in Portainer. I find it really helpful. Now, if we go back to applications, we can actually view our application and we sort of viewed the application before. And it's basically just the basic information of the application. You can see this is a deployment with one of one replicas. One thing that I haven't shown yet is services. And I know that this Helm application installs a service. And basically what a service is, is it's a way to load balance network traffic to your Kubernetes pods. So we can see the Nginx service right here, type load balancer, and it's already got an IP address. So if I want to access it, I'll just click here. And there you go. We have Nginx installed into our Kubernetes cluster using Portainer and Helm to install it. Anyways, that's all I really wanted to show in this video about how I use Portainer. Let me know in the comments below if you're using Portainer and how you're using it to manage your Kubernetes cluster. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.